Hey everybody, I've got a fantastic video for you today because we are taking a look at the world debut of the Ineos Grenadier Quartermaster. This is a all new pickup truck from Ineos, which is an English company based here in the UK. And the Grenadier is coming to US shores shortly. And this is our first look at the Quartermaster. And joining me today is Alex behind the camera. Alex, where are we at? We are at Goodwood in the UK near Chichester. It yeah, is fantastic. We are at the Goodwood Festival of Speed. If you want to look around, Alex, we got sports cars about to cruise up the mountain. There's a new 911 Dakar. And Ineos has chosen Goodwood as the place to make the official reveal of the Grenadier. Now let's talk about the Grenadier. So Ineos is a company founded by a gentleman who specializes in petrochemical um, divisions, right? And he, he loved the Defender. Um, Sir Ratcliffe, he loved the Defender so much to the fact that when Landover stopped producing the Defender, he wanted to continue making it. Landover said no, so he built his own. Then there was a little bit of a lawsuit, but ultimately the Grenadier was the result of his hard work. So this is a solid axle four-wheel drive SUV, and the Quartermaster is the new truck version. So let's talk about the differences. So compared to the SUV, the frame has been lengthened about 12 inches to make room for a new five foot bed and of course the tailgate. So all the business end of what's new is going to be toward the rear of this vehicle. Now this one is seen with this really cool soft topper design which I think looks great. But Definitely very uh, very British Army back here with you that like soft it? top. I like that. It's really cool. Yeah, I think it's really cool. And the bed, five feet. Is that long enough, Alex? That's pretty good because you, know, you can always put those eight foot items hanging out the back a little bit. That's a pretty tall tailgate. Stand next to that tailgate again. Yeah, from a height stamp, I'm six feet tall. I mean, look at where the bed lines up. Yeah. And Alex, I'll take the camera from you. I'll film you for a little bit. Let's go over to this red truck because it's got the uh, it's got the, the tonneau color. off or the topper off, I should say. And let's see what this has to offer. We'll kind of make our way toward the rear of this quartermaster here, and we'll look at the usability of this bed. So this is the uh, Trail Master Edition. What do you think? Is this a usable space, Alex? I like it, and I like how they gave us these spare tire wells on each side, so you could actually do two spares. It's kind of very Hummer EV truck there. Uh, and they do stick out a little bit further than the wheel wells, but I think you still have a really usable bed even with that twin spare arrangement. I am a little surprised, though, that this is a body-on frame truck with that lengthened frame, and they weren't able to squeeze the spare under inside the frame elements where we find it in most North American trucks because that would have probably saved a little bit of space back there in the bed. Well, it's a little disappointing because if you look at the standard Grenadier, Right, the spare is mounted on the swing gate, mm -hmm. but in here they didn't put it on the swing gate or the tailgate, I should say. Yeah, they actually look put under it here. Yeah, and there's there's actually a decent amount of room under there. They could have bottom mounted a spare. I think it's the only miss actually. I think everything else about this is absolutely fantastic. Again, look at look at how long uh, this uh, this tailgate is when it's actually down. That's that's pretty darn tall. So it's like 61 inches long, 60 some inches wide. I'm not sure with this spare though, you're going to be able to fit a, a sheet of plywood. Yeah, because every, you know. everybody needs to shoot a fit sheet of plywood, right? A lot of payload though. I think it was like 700 kilograms of payload. Yes, which is decent. The, the solidly, you know, solid for the mid-sized truck segment. I would like say. Like what, 1,800 pounds? Something like around that? there, yeah. And then towing capacity 3,500, which is going to be high 7,000 pound territory. Exactly. I don't know if I love this bed bar design. Kind of limits what you can put on through the side. That's true. But let's go back to the green one. It's a little bit less busy at the green one, and we'll talk about the rest of the vehicle because uh, the Ineos is an interesting rig to begin with all around. So in the front here, it's very um, Land Rover, let's be honest, right? Very Land Rover here, but then a little bit of G-Wagon there. Yeah, well, it's built in a facility too in, in Hamburg, which is an ex-Mercedes facility. And you like the front bumper design, Alex? I do. I really like it. It kind of gives me a little bit of a Jeep vibe, but this is not quite the same sort of off-road removable bumper section because if you come in close, you notice there is actually an intercooler right there just below that headlight. Well, that's, that's be because... Yeah, you want to pop the hood? I will pop the hood for you. Oh, this one is not hood poppable. Oh, no. Well, underneath the hood, uh, you kind of get a, a sense of it here. This is powered by a B58. BMW 3 liter inline 6. You can go over to the other one if you want to take a look at that hood. Yeah, let's go check that out. So the B58 is the same engine you'd get in like a 340i BMW, right? 540i, it's their turbocharged inline 6 cylinder engine. Behold all of its BMW goodness right there. Yeah, there smooth, it is. Silky smooth inline 6, ZF 8 speed transmission behind there. Yeah, That's I mean, a nice combo. Standard 2C transfer case, right? That's a great idea, right? Because if you're going to build a straight six. Yeah, I mean, why not get one of the best straight sixes available? Instead of BMW, building one, just go yeah, buy one. Just go buy one, exactly. Just, just go buy one from Beamer. And that eight-speed automatic is awesome. 
And then underneath the uh, Ineos, you're going to find a solid axle by, um, I think it's called Carraro is the manufacturer. Yeah. I think it's Italian, if I remember right. That's correct. Solid axles front and rear. This is going to be one of the very few vehicles available in North America with solid axles on both ends. It's basically the Wrangler in this. Now, they have actually opened up and announced pricing in the U.S. My dad was so excited, he actually put in an order wow. for the SUV. I am shocked. But the Quartermaster truck version is um, going to start at about 73,000 pounds here for the first edition with the, tra the trail edition package. You can also get this vehicle standard with the low range and then optional locking diffs. And Alex, look at this one. It's got like a, it's got a divider in it. Yeah, definitely very handy for pet owners. I guess if you just transport prisoners in the back. Interesting. Now let's take, check out the inside. What do you think of this completely vertical panel with all the controls in it? I, the first thing I noticed is this is going to be really easy if you want to mod your vehicle. So if you get a base vehicle without heated seats and some of these other things, you can get blanks in here so you can add your own buttons and switches if you want to do that. And I love the industrial chunkiness of most of these controls, especially these ones up here. If you go up here on the ceiling, this is a really great touch. Also, all these auxiliary switches, it's a little bit hard to show this, but all these really chunky auxiliary switches, you can buy high current ones, low current ones. There's some panel blanks, you can add your own stuff there. I really love that in an off-road vehicle because a lot of people add so many things to their vehicle aftermarket. Being able to do that more elegantly rather than just drilling holes in a panel that doesn't look good, you can get those blanks. That's, that seems like a really great idea to me. Uh, you got the uh, oh, you know what bar that, that Jeep has had for a lot of years here. The oblique, like the oblique bar? These panels too, they pop open on the roof. You got one on each side. Um, and then there's no instrument cluster in front of the steering wheel. It's yes. actually all incorporated yes. in the... But what is that little thing there in front of the steering wheel? What's that for? So I believe that's where they put the warning lights. Like uh, check engine and okay, that kind of okay. thing. Okay, uh, that, that makes sense. And then you got your mechanical lever for high-low and then your diff lock. And then you've got your traditional ZF 8-speed BMW Yeah, the BMW style. shifter there. Yeah. And then down here, down here let's, let's take a look down here, Tom, because we have these, we have plastic floors, basically, kind of an interesting touch. And then just uh, floor mats, obviously different floor mats available, but I like the whole hard plastic floor. It's gonna be really easy to clean. You know what I am noticing, which is odd to me? This is a UK-based company, right? Yep. Right-hand drive. Exactly, exactly. Wood poles on the left. Yes, that is true. That is true. It's pretty interesting. Uh, you know, let's be honest. That's where it belongs. Right. You know, so the, steering, <laughs> the steering wheel belongs on the other side anyway. So. So this is the um, actually the little panel van version. It this looks is like. the panel van version. Yeah. So kid, kidding about the prisoner transport, but it does kind of give you that vibe. But that is also interesting that they're making an off-road delivery vehicle essentially. Uh, let's open the back door here because it is a interesting barn door style thing. A little release there. How do we? Uh, there we go. Open that side right there. Swings over to the side. The double barn door side swing is a really interesting twist. Um, not entirely clear why they did that, actually, to be honest. Like, I don't, I don't understand the, uh, the benefit to this. I guess you could put long items. If you, if you go to IKEA and you need to hang your IKEA furniture out, you could, you could do that. <laughs> well, here's, here's what I don't like about this, right? So the, I think the idea is you don't have to open the big door if you're in a tight parking spot. I suppose. But I suppose. this is such a small opening yes. that really, if you want to fit anything in there. You're going to have to open the big door anyway. Yeah. It's kind of like the reverse of the Isuzu Trooper. That's true. Remember the Trooper had yeah. big door, small door? <laughs> my, my complaint about this is that I live in a hilly area and I'm always parking slightly off kilter. And it's just hard to keep this kind of door open uh, with the spare tire there. Because spare tire is door mounted, it's not under body mounted. Uh, which I think is not a problem for the uh, the SUV, but is a little bit more of a problem on that new pickup truck. On the new uh, truck. Oh look, there's a wiper back there. Yeah, there's a wiper hidden Woo. back there, yeah. I love that you can also get this vehicle with, yeah, that's cool. Storage. Very G-Wagon, but they actually incorporated storage, which is nice. Um, you can get this vehicle with an old style steel wheel, right? Yes. Yeah, Very industrial. The this one's all kitted out. We got the kayak on top, got the, the max snorkel. tracks, the snorkel. Yeah. I mean, desert air intake. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like the fogs in the grill? I, I do cool. love this whole twin headlight thing. It's very classic with the round design. So and look, look at how they did this one. They actually, they, they put you know, the big ring accent light in there and the headlight is actually just that tiny little bit inside with the, uh, the other beams on top. Jeep's been doing that for a hot second, yeah. like the That's, aftermarket community. It's really, really cute looking. Grenadier, this is a trail master, so this is gonna be the off-roady one with the- These also, you can you mount mounting accessories on the side of the doors, that is super cool. Yeah. Very industrial looking, get it on the back doors too. Rock rails too, yeah. beefy rock rails. Look, I mean, what I love about this, right, is it's um, it's a very purposeful vehicle. Yeah. You know, it's not designed to be super comfy or squishy or- This, this reminds me of what theoretically people want the G-Wagon to be. This, this very adventurous off-road vehicle that is certainly going to be a lot more affordable than a G-Wagon. G-Wagons are absolutely bonkers right now. But they are going nuts with the accessories they offer. They are. These little tables, little dividers. 
So, you know, the pricing in the US, right? It's gonna be 70 grand plus, realistically, yeah. 80 grand plus. Not cheap, cheap, but you know, uh, Land Rover's getting way over there, and hey, a, a Jeep Wrangler will get up to 70. I mean, and even a new Defender, realistically, you're gonna be in the mid 70s for That's a true. new Defender. Exactly, and the Defender is gonna be a unibody vehicle. This is a body on frame, purpose built off road vehicle, solid axles, which is what a lot of people really want off road. And that, that, that's what I really am intrigued about this. They designed a brand new vehicle because they couldn't buy what would have made sense. The old body on frame platform from JLR. They couldn't buy that. So they just went out and built their own body on frame thing. Which is really cool. Well, let's just make our way back to the truck. We'll close up this video. You know, I think Ineos is a company where a lot of folks in the States are very excited. Uh, we've got a, an Ineos store actually coming, um, or a dealer, I should say, coming to our area. Oh, where is it going to be? It's going to be in the Colorado Springs area, as I understand it. Um, but it sounds like we're pretty close to the hitting market. In the European market, like the, uh, the, the UK market, you can get these vehicles with that um, three liter diesel engine. That seems really tasty, but of course, diesel's future in America is pretty limited. And honestly, diesel's future in the UK is gonna be probably pretty limited as well. So if you want a diesel one, I would say, get your Grenadier while you can, because diesel's future in the, U in the European Union and the UK is probably a little limited also. So it has been confirmed that the Quartermaster is coming to the US. We don't know pricing. That'll be released when uh, order books open in 2024, but really stoked that a vehicle with this form factor is making its way stateside. A lot of Jeep Gladiator in it, a lot of old school Defender, a lot of utility. Um, not so sure about the spare tire placement, but we'll have more information uh, as we get closer to launch. Big thank you to Alex Dykes from Alex on Autos and now Auto Buyer's Guide. We'll see you in the next video.